Hello, this is a presentation about some of the wonderful wildlife, plants and animals that can be found within the parish of Chudley. For those who don't know Chudley, it lies in South Devon, about 10 miles from the south coast, uh, just outside Dartmoor National Park. Before I go on, just um, a few things about Chudley Wild, which is a relatively new organisation. It's uh, about five years old uh, at the time of recording this, uh, early in 2021. And as you can see, um, we've set about trying to record, share and look after the wildlife within our parish. So you can stop the video if you like and read those in detail. But for now, I'm going to plough on. OK, so the red line there outlines the parish. Um, you can see through the middle of it runs the A38 dual carriageway and um, skirting the southeastern side, the A380 road from Exeter to Torquay. It covers almost 25 square kilometres and has an incredibly varied geology and hence soils and vegetation, which give rise to lots of different animal species. Um, we have several small watercourses draining southwestwards into the River Teen. And amongst the important habitats we've got are ancient woodland, limestone rocks, Devonian limestone outcrops, uh, little bits of heathland and some residual uh, unimproved grasslands, very species rich. We have a whole host of designations, um, so three sites of special scientific interest, one of which is also part of a special area of conservation. And we have 13, sorry, 17, actually I think possibly more than that now, county wildlife sites within the parish. Um, there are amongst the animals seven, uh, 12 species of bats, which is an awful lot of bats. Most of Britain's bat species occur here. Um, well over 100 species of birds have been recorded and no less than 37 species of butterflies, which is a very good total. Nine orchids, um, all of which actually have been seen at one location. Uh, which I'll cover shortly. So this is an aerial view that more or less encompasses the whole of the parish. The town of Chudley is rather offset down in the southwestern corner. Um, and as you can see, the altitude varies from almost down to sea level along the Teen Valley, right up to nearly 250 metres on Great Holden. We have within it the SAC that I mentioned there, the part of the South Hams Special Area of Conservation, which was designated for Greater Horseshoe Bats principally. Uh, just right these days on the edge of town, of course. And then over the hill, over Ugbrook Ridge, lies Ugbrook Park with some um, wonderful parkland and some larger areas of water. So this is um, a map of geology. Uh, it's rather complicated, but I think the principal message to take away is that we have this rather narrow band of Devonian limestone that runs just from just south of the town in an arc and cuts across the A38 just on the bottom of Halden slope coming off Great Holden there. The Holden itself comprises gravels and particularly upper green sand uh, sandstones which are rather impoverished and these days mostly coniferous plantation. So this map um, highlights it's not quite up to date it doesn't have all of the county wildlife sites on it but it does show the other designated areas, 
So most importantly of all our special area of conservation just to the south of the town. Um, several SSSIs, as I've said, including um, a large chunk of Halden Hills. And some little blocks of very nice ancient woodland scattered around the parish. And quite a few county wildlife sites. So these are not quite up to the standard, generally speaking, of SSSIs, um, but they're important at a county level. And uh, developers and local authorities um, can take note of the value of these when they're deciding on their local development plans. This, I'm not going to go into detail, but this again is just to emphasise the vast range of habitat types that we can find in the parish. Um, not all of the uh, areas are coloured. Uh, the white, much of the white areas there are actually improved grassland. So we have relatively limited value to wildlife. But a, a concentration of, of um, quite nice areas, particularly skirting the parish, parish. So I'm going to start uh, going through the parish uh, from top to bottom, as it were. Here's the um, one of the beach avenues that run through Holden Forest. The beaches themselves are rather splendid these days, set on wonderful old mossy banks. And there are lots of common birds, wood pigeon, one of the most prominent uh, birds to be found, um, not just in Chudley Parish, but over much of England, in fact. Um, sadly, we have possibly lost the last remaining population of turtle doves in Devon. Um, Holden traditionally has been quite a good place for them, but I'm not aware of any uh, singing birds in, in the last few years. So maybe, as elsewhere in Britain, um, they have disappeared. Chaffinch, however, one of the commoner uh, breeding birds around Chudley, or at least traditionally, and I think we have seen quite a dramatic decline in these in recent years, and the causes are really unknown at present. The goldcrest, um, one of Europe's smallest birds, in fact, joint smallest with this newcomer to Halden, the firecrest. So these two both weigh about the same as a 20 pence piece. Uh, I hope you can appreciate the plumage differences in them from there. But the goldcrest is a widespread and common bird um, except after very harsh winters in coniferous woodland and anywhere, in fact, where there are conifers. The firecrest, we think, is spreading as a result of climate change into England, and Devon has seen um, a small surge of these, and uh, it was only in 2020 that um, some numbers of these were discovered um, on Holden Hills during the breeding season. Um, a fair few of which were within Chudley Parish. Both of these are hard to see during the summer and uh, it's best to listen out for their slightly different but very high pitched songs. If you're like me um, over 60 and your hearing is failing, then you may have difficulty locating these birds audibly. Crossbills also frequent the plantations, although in uh, variable numbers from year to year. They're, they're rather nomadic birds and appear particularly in years when there's a good cone crop. Chudley is a, a great parish for birds of prey. The buzzard here, the common buzzard, um, by far these days the most frequently seen raptor in the parish. Sadly, the honey buzzards that used to breed on Halden um, up until about 20 years ago seem to have gone now, but we occasionally get records of birds passing over. We live in hope that they may recolonize the hills one day. The honey buzzard incidentally is a summer visitor. 
whereas the common buzzard is present all year round in, in good numbers. The goshawk here, um, a much larger, virtually buzzard sized version of the sparrowhawk, which we see regularly around the parish. Goshawk, we have a few pairs slowly increasing their numbers in Devon and uh, certainly Holden and the Teen Valley are areas where goshawks might, if you're very lucky, um, be seen. They are, however, um, rather secretive and feed mostly within woodland. The hobby uh, is also seen rather irregularly during the summer months. It's a summer visitor, um, a wonderfully agile falcon that's designed to feed on swifts and swallows and martins. And we do um, sometimes see them over Chudley Town, in fact, uh, having a go at the, the house martins, particularly in late summer when they're feeding these birds to their young. At other times of the year, hobbies are mostly insectivorous. So not all of Holden is covered in conifers. Uh, there are some open areas as a result of clear felling blocks, and some of these have been retained and indeed have started to regain their heathland nature. So with heathers and gorse coming through. Um, and in these open areas, there are birds like tree pipit um, and also in some of the young conifer plantations, tree pipits. And indeed the white throat, a summer visitor also uh, to these areas um, can be found. A rather scarce bird these days on our farmland, but still hanging out in a few places on Holden. So this is a block of heathland um, that's actually now rather scrubbed over on the fringes of Harkham Valley, so on the lower southern slopes of Holden. And this is one of the areas amongst the conifer plantations as well, where night jars can be seen and heard, particularly heard during the summer evenings. They make their wonderful long churring song. This, in case you think it's a, a night jar with two heads, is actually a, a female brooding a large youngster. So that's the night jar. Holden, uh, one of the reasons that Holden is a special site of special scientific interest is because of the nationally significant population of night jars that breeds there. And during the last survey, which was, uh, I think, over 10 years ago now, there were over 100 pairs of night jars located. After a series of mild winters, the population of this lovely resident warbler, the Dartford warbler, um, can be found on bits of heathland where they're not normally uh, associated. But Holden has had a few over the years. I don't, I'm not sure we have any currently, um, but it's one worth looking out for. So one of the heathy areas is actually inside the race course on the top of Holden. And just the edge of this, um, the southern portion lies within the parish. But it is a, quite a good area for these heathland species, birds of open country like the stone chat. And there has also been a, a, a well studied population of adders um, within the racecourse area. Alden has a good population of fallow deer. Uh, this is one actually in Powderham Park near the River X, but the fallow deer that have escaped from Powderham over the centuries have made their way onto Holden and many of them have reverted to a very dark form. But there are places within the parish where a dozen or, or more can be seen at times. More commonly across the parish there are roe deer which are not found in large groups but usually in um, small parties, family parties very often. Um, even uh, within the town boundary, as it were, uh, still just eking out um, an existence 
in the grassy areas and grazing within little bits of woodland. Foxes seem to be fairly widespread, sometimes uh, being seen in the town and indeed even breeding in, in the town in quiet areas at times. And badgers, um, to be honest, the, the best measure of, of badger abundance is the frequency with which unfortunately dead ones appear on the side of the dual carriageways. So let's move on to grassland. This is a steep field not far out of town on the ridge up to Ugbrook. Grasslands cover most of the parish, mostly in fact permanent grassland and increasingly horses rather than the sheep or perhaps cattle that are more conventionally found. However, there are some rare examples of unimproved semi-natural grassland. So lowland meadows um, often managed for hay like these at Deer Park Farm. And uh, here there are huge, um, wonderful displays of green winged orchids and a whole host of other unusual plants, at least unusual in the parish sense. Now there are also some nice flowers to be found in places along our roadside verges and here at Crammer's Cross which is near Harkham uh, there are no less than nine species of orchids to be found. Now this is a recognised special verge recognised by Devon County Council and is managed um, to suit the wildflower populations especially. Of particular interest here is the greater butterfly orchid and um, this is a localised flower in Britain and we have a particularly good population of it here near the A38. In fact there are a number of species uh, found in great quantity as well as the greater butterfly, lots of early purple orchids early in the season and then common spotted orchids in midsummer with a few bee orchids. Uh, all orchids tend to come and go a little bit. They're not very consistent in their flowering from year to year. Um, but I think it's important to just stress that this is uh, one of the most important orchid sites in Devon. And to give you some idea of the numbers that have been counted over the last uh, 20 years or so, we've had uh, a peak of over a thousand greater butterfly orchids, which is quite something. And as you can see, other, other species there joining in the throng. As well as the orchids, there's a, a population of this little fern. It doesn't look much like a fern, but this is adder's tongue. And uh, actually in 2020, a large population of adder's tongue was found in a meadow next to Putts Hills Wood. So it's uh, easily missed, uh, but worth looking out for. There are also good populations of grass vetchling, a member of the pea family with this very attractive flower. Uh, the um, rest of the plant looks rather like grass, as the name suggests, so it's easily overlooked until it flowers. And they're present um, both at Crammer's Cross, Arkham, and in the uh, A38 verges more widely, and some of the slip roads. These species rich verges have also got good populations of butterflies, um, common ones like meadow brown, but also the less widespread ones like marbled white and small skipper. The skippers are very moth-like and bottom right there is the well-named dingy skipper and the larvae of that feed on bird's foot trefoil which is also the larval food plant of the common blue butterfly down there on the left. 
There are also good populations of grasshoppers and bush crickets in any of these rough, grassier and shrubbier areas. This is a bush cricket known as long-winged conehead, which is a fairly recent addition to Devon and indeed the parish. And rather scarce, typically in the lower or coastal areas of southern Britain, the great green bush cricket, our largest species. And these trill loudly, or at least loudly for those of a younger ear than mine, uh, from late summer onwards. And I've heard these in the past along the A38. But sadly, my hearing is not so good now. Where there's long, dense grass growth, tussocky grasses, um, and in other places, reeds, but we don't have reed beds in Chudley Parish, uh, you might find the harvest mouse. This is Europe's smallest rodent, and it builds these tennis ball sized spherical nests um, in which it lives and raises its young. So we know these from a couple of sites, at least in the parish, are likely to be present in more, more places, but actually long grass is rather uncommon these days. And certainly we don't have the traditionally managed cereal fields, the wheat fields and oats fields where these little critters used to breed. That's a really awful picture. Uh, the white splodge near the middle is a barn owl sitting on a gate. This is um, in the Batfields, Old Way Batfields Reserve, just after we've uh, finished and are tidying up after one of our bat evenings that Chudley Wild has been running every year, at least until COVID intervened. Uh, bat owl, barn owl is a, is a particularly uncommon species in the parish, rarely seen. So it was quite a surprise that this one came to have a look at us but it's particularly attracted to areas of longer grass where there are lots of voles to be had. Okay, so I mentioned that we have some areas of ancient woodland. This is one of them. This is looking down from the top of Chudley Rocks. And here inside the woodland, we can see a lush ground flora and lots of shrubs in the understory. So here you can see um, things like ramsons or wild garlic, one of the ancient woodland indicator plants. Of course, this is very characteristic when you walk through it in the spring and you can smell the fact that you're walking through wild garlic. Wood anemone is another characteristic ancient woodland plant, very delicate often slightly pinky flowers. And unusual in the Chudley area or the Teen Valley is this parasitic plant known as toothwort. It's a parasite on the roots of hazel. So um, often in the vicinity of hazel bushes, you may find small groups of these pinky buff plants growing. Here's another parasitic plant. This is ivy broom rape, and it's rather more widespread in South Devon and including in the parish. And uh, as the name suggests, it's a parasite on ivy. The tree creeper is one of a number of resident insectivores in the um, larger clumps of woodland, as is nuthatch. Nuthatch doing particularly well these days, possibly helped along by food given in gardens, peanuts and sunflower seeds. And here's a marsh tit, a bird sadly not doing quite so well, always a scarce um, resident bird in old woodland and uh, it appears possibly to be suffering from competition from great tits and blue tits, which of course are doing very well, thank you, from the food we provide in our gardens.
silver washed fritillary here. Um, one of our largest butterflies, bright orange butterfly of July in particular, July, August. These are have a close association with oak trees, as indeed does this lovely butterfly, the purple hair streak. So these are both associated with oaks, but with elms. Originally the English elm, but these days because of the demise of English elms through Dutch elm disease, the white letter hair streak is found predominantly where there are witch elms. Now, witch elms are not particularly common, but they are around Chudley Rocks and in a few other places in the parish. They're easily recognised in April by these um, pale green flowers that come at the same time as the first fresh leaves. And the adults um, lay eggs on the witch elm and the young feed on the developing flowers. Our woodland and scrub and dense hedgerows in Chudley, as well as more widely in Devon, are really quite important areas for dormice. These two sleepy ones um, not really wanting to wake up. Um, they just to prove they do occur in the parish, there's one that came out of a dormouse box placed in the Old Way Batfields Reserve in 2020. So let's have a closer look at the, the limestone rocks and the caves within the Chudley Rocks. So from the top we have splendid views over towards Dartmoor, Haytor there in the distance. Um, but in the foreground we can see a little bit of what's effectively limestone pavement. So you can see what are known as clints and grikes, so cross um, etchings in the stone caused by uh, rainwater erosion. But also around here nice plants grow. There are the uh, makeshift uh, clints and grikes, not quite as spectacular as those in the Pennines. And pyramidal orchid is one of the flowers that's particularly noticeable here during the summer months. So the caves themselves have grills across locked to keep out unwanted intruders. Uh, licensed bat workers go in uh, at, during the winter months to assess the wintering numbers of greater horseshoe bats and other species. So we have a good record of both the wintering numbers and also those that emerge during the summer through a series of systematic counts made. Here's the greater horseshoe bat um, showing its horseshoe shaped uh, process on the face that it uses for echolocation. Gives out a particularly powerful pulse. So we can detect these also using bat detectors as with other bat species. This one has been ringed um, for um, as part of a study of greater horseshoe bats. You might like to notice as well as the horseshoe on the face, look at those lovely luscious lips just below. Um, they were sometimes described to me, some uh, once described to me as um, very kissable lips. I'm not sure given what we now know about COVID that one should encourage that sort of behavior. So greater horseshoe bats like to eat large insects. They're big bats. So they look for big flying prey. This is a cockchafer or maybug. These used to be very common in late spring, uh, May, June time. These days much scarcer, but we do have other uh, beetles, scarab beetles, dung beetles that provide good protein packs, particularly in late summer when the young are making their first flights not too far away from the caves and they need a good supply of food. The bats will also take moths and indeed crane flies, daddy long legs. So uh, having 
a good resource, good grassland resource for these in particular is, is important for them and especially within 500 metres of the caves. A radio tracking study of greater horseshoe bats has shown the commuting routes and feeding areas of the greater horseshoe bats from Chudley Caves. We found that they flew a good five miles from the caves, covering over 120 square kilometres of broad-leaved woodland and pastures rich in those chafer beetles and dung beetles. This is um, two representations of Chudley, or at least centred on the Chudley Caves, where the bats emerge, just showing the differences in land use over that 60 year period, 63 years. So just after the war, Chudley was still a fairly small town. So look at the yellow areas on, on those plans. And on the right, you can see a big expansion of the urban area of Chudley. And of course, the A38 dual carriageway coming in as well. So things have changed an awful lot over recent decades. And the bats in particular have started to be squeezed from those areas close to the rocks, particularly where the young bats would feed. Here's another example of uh, quite an old aerial photograph, pre A38 of course, now A38 and the railway line still showing there on the left hand side of that image. The yellow spot shows Chudley rocks and all those yellow crosses are areas that have been lost to the bats as feeding areas um, since that image was taken. So that's a very substantial part of the um, areas close to the cave. That said, the monitoring, at least over the last 20 years, appears to suggest that our greater horseshoe bats are doing OK and indeed possibly even um, increasing, maybe even doubling their numbers over that 20 year period. So that's very good. It does reflect increasing numbers within the South Hams special area of conservation, which has um, its uh, focal points in a couple of major breeding sites um, outside our parish, I hasten to add. But we still nevertheless have uh, a reasonably healthy population here and one that we have some responsibility to keep an eye on. A few years ago, the, um, the authorities produced um, a map showing greater horseshoe protection zones. So these were with uh, planners and developers in mind, showing the areas that were important as commuting routes and indeed the feeding areas. So you'll see sort of buffer strips alongside these important hedgerows and flight lines. That yellow line or those yellow lines show two of the commuting routes for the bats coming from the caves just off the picture to the right and converging on the tunnel that goes underneath the A38 by the sewage works. So what's apparent also is that we've lost fields that were here just less than 10 years ago and we're currently losing these fields to development. Part of the deal with the losses of Lower Trindle Close was that three fields were given to the Devon Wildlife Trust to manage for greater horseshoe bats. So they're managed principally by cattle that are grazed during the summer without the use of anti-worming agents to ensure that their dung is full of goodies for the bats to eat when they fly away. So as I mentioned, we have important populations of bats. We actually have a good proportion of Britain's breeding species of bats. And we've been keeping a close eye on these using a small team of people with bat detectors. 
Just across the valley from Chudley Rocks is Palace Quarry. This hasn't been quarried now for a few years um, and thankfully uh, birds have taken advantage of this. Not the greatest of images but that's a female peregrine falcon sitting on her nest. So these have nested most years uh, for at least 30 years now, rearing uh, several young most years. There's one of the adults actually flying over my house. And until perhaps 20 years ago, there were also a pair of kestrels breeding here. Kestrel, of course, the bird that characteristically hovers and we were, got used to seeing these along motorway and dual carriageway verges, hunting the voles as the grasslands develop along them. Unfortunately, it's hard to find now in the parish and I'm not sure we have any breeding birds left at all. The quarry, um, as a matter of passing interest, uh, was the breeding site or the site for a singing nightingale for a couple of years, um, although it's a bird that we have now sadly lost uh, from Devon, at least as a breeding species. The quarry also holds quite a number of jackdaws and it's quite common outside the breeding season to see a flock of 50, maybe 100 jackdaws, particularly on windy days, um, seemingly playing around in the air, riding on the breeze around the quarry and wandering quite far and wide over the town. The quarry also usually has a pair of ravens nesting, uh, one of several pairs in the parish. And um, it's quite common to hear them croaking their deep croaks as they fly over um, the Ch Chudley town. So we have rather less arable land in the parish than was the case just after the war. A lot of arable was lost, it was converted to, uh, to grasslands after cultivation during the war. Um, but this is a view from Ugbrook Ridge towards Holden showing reasonable amounts of arable land. Arable has suffered greatly in terms of farmland bird declines over the last 30 or 40 years. Um, one of those that we can still just about find in the parish is the yellow hammer, characteristic little bit of bread and no cheese coming out of this bird. So very characteristic song, but rarely heard these days in the parish. We've got a few on the uh, the heathy areas of Halden and also often these days associating with horses and horse pasture um, and I think stealing some of the grain given to the horses, truth be known. We have no great history of the soil bunting in the parish. Now the soil bunting is a very special bird to South Devon. It virtually um, it came very close to extinction in the 1980s and uh, has since undergone a bit of a resurgence thanks to conservation efforts. Uh, but we have had in recent years a few records of single birds singing at two or three sites around the town and within the parish. So worth keeping an eye open for. They are known to come to bird tables, tables in the winter, not hanging feeders, but like um, other buntings and finches, they like open tables with grain, particularly barley, provided for them. But normally they would be found feeding in weedy stubbles where they can get plenty of seeds. Um, sadly, along with these, we've also seen um, a decline in skylarks in common with most of Britain. Uh, the numbers on farmland have plummeted. We still have a few pairs hanging on in the northeast of the parish towards um, the A380, Kurswell and beyond, and just outside the parish an odd one maybe at uh, near um, Gapper, but a scarce bird breeding 
in the parish. And in 2006, uh, an area of, of game cover, um, I think being managed for pheasants uh, as part of the Ugbrook estate, hosted a family of cranes. That's a particularly rare bird. They went off each evening to roost on Exminster marshes and for uh, a week or two frequented Chudley Parish. It's uh, fair to say that one of the most commonly seen birds around the town, particularly uh, around Ugbrook, is the pheasant. And um, pheasants, indeed, in late summer are a major proportion of the biomass of bird life, uh, not just in the parish, but in, in the United Kingdom these days. OK, this is the lane that runs along the edge of Ugbrook Estate on the top of Ugbrook Ridge. And it's just a fine example of a, a beautiful Devon hedge row and hedge bank um, with some lovely trees on it. So very rich in plant and animal life. In spring, I just love the red, white and blue that we get in our hedgerows. So that's the red campion, the greater stitchwort, and of course, bluebells. There are other colours as well in the hedge banks. Violets, primroses on the left and then on the right, the um, yellow archangel which is actually um, an ancient woodland indicator. And in the hedge banks, it's often indicating a, an ancient woodland origin for that hedge bank. A rare plant found in that particular hedge bank up on Ugbrook is this plant rather nicely known as the bastard balm. There's a slightly better picture of it, rather nettle-like leaves and trumpet flowers, but quite a rare plant in Britain. Much more common in the hedge banks, particularly those uh, that are rather richer and maybe less species rich, is the he hedge mustard or garlic mustard. There with a hoverfly on it. Um, I've put that in particularly because um, in the spring we often see this butterfly, the orange tip, flying along hedgerows looking for garlic mustard on which to lay its eggs or wandering into the meadows to look for ladies smock or cuckoo flower or milkmaids and the circle there shows two eggs of orange tip that have been laid on that plant and the larvae will then eat the developing seed pods. A particularly important butterfly species in our hedgerows and scrubby areas is the brown hair streak. Now, I have to admit that I don't think anyone has ever seen or knowingly seen the adult butterfly in the parish. And indeed, I've very rarely seen it in over 30 years anywhere in Britain, um, let alone in the parish. But what we do know is that it lays its eggs quite widely in uncut blackthorn bushes. And here's a little group of three eggs. These are tiny pinhead sized eggs, so not easy to see, but they can be found with a bit of patience and uh, careful searching during the winter months. So something to look out for. Of course, common species in our hedgerows like hawthorn provide both flowers, nectar sources, uh, and then during the autumn and winter, lovely berries for birds to eat and mammals to, to gather. And likewise, the wild roses with their rose hips. So this is an aerial view showing in the foreground, Ugbrook lakes and some of the woodland and parkland. And indeed, Ugbrook is the um, main area of parkland and certainly has our larger bodies of water. But actually, the trees in Ugbrook Park are some of the most important areas 
Um, they have nationally important lichen communities and species. The lakes themselves um, are not particularly well known to those living outside the estate. There are certainly large numbers of mallard reared and released onto the lakes for sporting purposes. Um, but we do know that little grebe and coot occur here and in the winter months both here and uh, on watercrest ponds um, in the north of the parish, tufted duck top right and sometimes pochard can be found, although these are probably more likely after hard weather. So I mentioned that we have a number of watercourses running into the River Teen, which is shown here, a picture taken from Chudley Bridge. The River Teen is large enough to be of interest to this handsome duck, the goosander. Goosanders are sawbill ducks, so-called, because they have serrated bills and these are used to catch fish. They breed along rivers in large holes in trees. And although we've not proven them breeding actually in the parish, we have record a record of a brood swimming through the parish down the river and we um, periodically see pairs or sometimes just the male flying up and down the river during uh, spring and summer and winter as well. And in recent years we've seen the arrival of this handsome beast. This is um, an alien in Britain, a mandarin duck, hails from Asia, from China and indeed there are now more of these in Britain probably than there are in the native haunts in Asia. So we do have I suppose something of a responsibility for these. The uh, first breeding records came from a camera trap along Bramble Brook uh, but certainly in 2020 there was a pair frequenting the river and they were seen just downriver uh, near Chudley Knighton with quite a large brood soon afterwards. This is the uh, said Bramble Brook on the edge of the parish. Um, Trusham lying off to the right up the hill and Deer Park Farm on the near bank. So along the Teen particularly, Cape Brook and to a lesser extent Bramble Brook, Kingfishers seen quite often and breeding either in the parish or perhaps just out of the parish on occasions. Dippers, certainly we have a few pairs, a um, couple of pairs on our section of the River Teen and maybe a third pair just outside in Chudley Knighton and then a pair probably resident on Cape Brook. Grey wagtails, a few of these also uh, found along the watercourses during the summer where they breed. Grey wagtail very inappropriately named as it's got beautiful yellow underneath. Um, but more commonly seen uh, during the winter months when it's often found actually around buildings, particularly those with flat roofs. Along these fast flowing waters, um, not too many dragonflies to be found, but one of the most noticeable ones is the beautiful demoiselle. This is the uh, telltale departure sign of an otter. Now we do know we have otters in the parish. Uh, we found, find the signs. Occasionally they've been camera trapped and certainly feeding signs have been found uh, along Bramble Brook and um, along the river and along Cape Brook probably too. And sadly, um, about 20 years ago, a couple were killed over a few years um, on Chudley Bridge. So unfortunately, when the water is high in the river, the otters um, come out onto the road and they're very prone to getting hit by passing cars. OK, let's move into the town. Um, buildings and gardens are quite important habitats for wildlife, as well as the greener areas around. 
here are some of the birds that are typically associated with Chudley's buildings. So the swift one that we've taken a particular interest in in Chudley over recent years, particularly because numbers seem to be declining nationally and they are suffering badly from basically people making their houses and buildings bird proof. So they're not able to get into the roof spaces where they would like to breed. House martins put their mud nests under the eaves and uh, these are also fairly widespread often around farm buildings but also some of the new housing estates get them for a while. The birds um, are attracted actually to muddy areas which of course they need to bring those many many hundreds of pellets back to build their nests with. Bottom left is the starling, another bird like the swift and indeed the sparrow to the right that have been kept out of buildings. So they've been deprived of good breeding areas. And we really do need to do a bit more, I think, to help starling in Chudley. Sparrows don't seem to be doing too badly here. There are localised areas where you can see lots of sparrows still in Chudley. Swifts we've erected, we being Chudley Wild have erected uh, a number of swift nest boxes. These are two rows on the back of the town hall. They haven't actually taken to using them yet, but we think they probably still uh, need a bit of time to get used to them. Uh, we still have a few pairs nesting in the roof of the town hall, as with um, other older buildings in Chudley. House sparrows can also be provided with nest boxes. This is um, a three roomed apartment attached to my house, um, though I will admit the sparrows only ever use one of the holes in any one year. So they don't seem to be particularly sociable when they're nesting in these. Starlings, of course, very common birds um, in grasslands during the winter when birds come to us from the continent. But um, and of course, at times like that, they will come and make use of the, of the food that we provide in our gardens. These uh, birds, green finches, have declined dramatically um, over the last 30 years due to um, an internal parasite that uh, has really knocked them for six. So I see in my garden where this was taken, these days I, I see one about every two months. So they're quite a notable visitor. We only have a few pairs, I suspect, now in the parish. The same cannot be said of these two species, the goldfinch on the right, now very much in the top 10 garden birds um, during the winter months. And on the, on the left, the siskin, a male siskin here, and there's a female siskin. They often come in pairs, often come into gardens in late January, February, March time, when natural food becomes scarce. And uh, here you can see them feeding on Niger seed. Uh, these days they don't look twice at it. They much prefer white sunflower hearts. Much easier to get the food quickly from sunflowers, it seems. Uh, bullfinch still to be found, uh, though always a scarce bird in the parish, but uh, small numbers can be found around our woodlands and denser hedgerows, occasionally coming into gardens. Even rarer, uh, in winter, the brambling, a chaffinch-like finch that has good years, but mostly not very good years in Britain during the winter, one to look out for. Much commoner and one of the commoner garden birds, the blue tit. Here on peanuts, a, a traditional food for um, blue tits and great tits. So both of these common and widespread in the parish. Slightly less common, uh, but particularly where there are conifers in the vicinity, the coal tit, showing there it's um, white nape. And also um, coming into gardens, of course, are a 
on a regular basis and one of the commonest uh, birds in the parish, in fact, very widespread currently, is the robin. This one looking rather as though it's just eaten an orange hole. It's uh, just fluffed up like many birds are during the cold weather, making it look a lot bigger than it really is. But it's an insectivore and has difficulty finding insect food during the winter months. Along with this little bird, the wren, and this one, the dunnock or hedge sparrow. So these insectivores finding it very hard during the winter months and often their numbers decline after a severe winter. Pied wagtail we see quite commonly in the winter, particularly around buildings or around water. This one has come into my garden during snow, looking for little scraps of food. And an even rarer visitor, I think uh, we had one meadow pipit over 30 years uh, that came into the garden. And again, like the, meadow, like the pied wagtail, was looking for little bits of food on the ground. Usually, I have to say, meadow pipits found in our grass fields during the winter months. Not a breeding bird, I don't think, in the parish. More up on the moorlands. Song thrush, sadly not as common these days as it used to be. And um, even less common and also declined, the missile thrush, much bigger thrush. Um, we have a few pairs of these in the parish but they have large territories and usually require quite large areas of short grass to feed on. Song thrush is more happy in the hedge banks and woodlands where they can find snails and worms. During hard weather and maybe um, out in the countryside more widely, these two winter thrushes, so visitors from Scandinavia and further east perhaps, bottom left the red wing and top right the field fair. That one photographed during that glaze that we got um, during the beast from the east uh, a few years ago. So these occasionally coming into gardens, particularly hunting out apples, rotten apples. And of course, whether a bird's concentrating, as they often do around feeders in gardens, then you must expect um, some predation. And here a sparrowhawk, um, unfortunately taken one of our local starlings. But this is how it goes. Sparrowhawk, a fairly common bird of prey these days, but 50 years ago, very rare and severely um, declined as a result of the use of DDT. Jays uh, occur in the parish rather sparingly, usually in pairs. And to be honest, most obvious in October, November time when they are collecting and caching acorns. They're taking large numbers of acorns and burying them for um, hoping to find them later in the winter. Of course, many of them don't get found. So jays are very good at um, naturally planting woodlands. One of the rare birds I've seen from my house on a couple of occasions is this uh, bird, the black red start. It's a rare autumn visitor, spring migrant to Devon. And a few hang around the coast in the winter months where there are plenty of insects to be had. So this was this particular one, a young male was here for just one day as was this bird. This is a wheat ear and almost certainly a bird. This was in May 2020 on uh, one of the bungalow roofs and um, it had it was resting and I'm pretty sure that evening it would have gone northwards or north eastwards and in fact would have been heading almost certainly for Greenland having wintered in Africa. So a long distance migrant and one that um, it's just amazing to think that birds like that may come and sit on your roof one day. Now, birds that do come and sit on roofs quite often in parts of Chudley are herring gulls. And we have a, a small population, um, now a small breeding population, in fact, with one or two pairs 
breeding on the school in recent years. This is one that uh, wakes me up in the mornings and a few years ago took to um, attacking itself in uh, one of my bedroom windows and uh, it was clearly seeing its own reflection and because of a study roof was able to stand on it and peck away at its reflection. So I did deter it in the end and we haven't seen it doing it since. Butterflies in gardens. The holly blue is the default blue that you'll see flying around through gardens, passing through quite quickly often um, at around about head height. Certainly not usually all that low down, but sometimes quite high. And that's because it's looking for holly or ivy. And it has two, two generations a year. Uh, the young from the first brood are reared on holly and on the second brood on ivy. So these four species we see more widely in the parish, though not um, all as commonly um, from year to year. Top left is the comma, which will breed on nettles and suckering elms. The painted lady top right is an irregular migrant. Uh, these breed on thistles. Uh, we don't see many of them most years. Some years we see huge numbers on, on one famous occasion. I witnessed a massive migration across Harkham Valley on the edge of Holden, uh, which I don't think has been repeated since then. But these are individuals flying from the continent, maybe from as far as North Africa, heading into Britain on a, a southerly airflow. Bottom right is the small tortoiseshell, um, along with the peacock butterfly. These, the larvae of these feed on nettles. Though of course, as you see here on these right hand images, Budlia in its various forms is a very good nectar source for them. Top left, a bramble flower, beautiful nectar source and great berries for wildlife later on. Bottom left is a grass feeding butterfly known as the speckled wood and it's the one that you'll often see flying around in dappled shade and it does come into some gardens. It breeds usually in my garden in some of the long grasses in the shade of some of the shrubs and trees. Here's my garden pond looking out when we had a view that wasn't houses. Um, sadly they're houses now but a pond a great addition to any garden so I thoroughly recommend having one. Um, you will spend hours and hours peering into it and learning a lot from it. So if you have room, put a pond in, no matter how small, a bit of water, you can even just a water the size of a washing up bowl can provide a lot of entertainment. So here, of course, um, there may be things like dragonflies attracted. The broad bodied chaser, one of the first to find a newly created pond. The southern hawker will breed in late summer in ponds and often large numbers of them will emerge, surprisingly large numbers will emerge um, and leave behind their larval skins. The common darter, uh, the commonest late summer dragonfly um, with that orangey red abdomen. And of course, where there's water, there may be frogs. So I've seen on occasions over a hundred frogs during the spawning time, which in Chudley is mostly around February, quite early on in the season. I also have large numbers of newts, uh, palmate, and this is a common or um, common newt. Um, we may or may not have the great crested newt in the parish. It would be great to find a breeding population of them, but they're really quite rare in Devon. And we're fortunate in that the long vegetation around the pond, the drier areas uh, attract slow worms. And I think anywhere in the parish where there is uh, tall vegetation, 
long grass left to grow that are likely to be slow worms. And a good way to find out if you've got them is to put down um, a plastic tray and look under it periodically um, when it's not too hot and not too cold uh, because as reptiles the slow worms will come under to warm up um, and you'll be able to see them underneath if you lift them up carefully. Pheasant I mentioned earlier widespread around the agricultural areas of the parish very common in the arable and grass fields but also on occasions coming into people's gardens this one hoovering up some seeds that I put down for uh, to be honest other bird species and on one famous occasion my wife was in the garden when she realized she was being accompanied by a hen pheasant and the this hen pheasant um, after a while disappeared and when my wife went back into the kitchen to make a cup of tea what should be sitting on the kitchen windowsill but said hen pheasant looking for a way out so you should never be surprised at what may turn up in Chudley Parish on this um, famous occasion in September a few years ago these two young lads found this bird and to give them every credit identified it as a Manx shearwater now this is a seabird that breeds on offshore islands we have a population on Lundy Island in Devon um, but many of the Welsh islands as well have populations and the young birds when they fledge um, fly out to sea and should head for the South Atlantic but a small number of them go the wrong way and end up in land and this was wandering around um, part of Chudley and uh, I'm happy to say later in the day uh, it was released and flew off strongly from Tynmouth Pier so as I say never be surprised at what you find in Chudley it may be an octopus a mermaid or even a panda at least if you look beyond carnival floats so recently Chudley Wild has been collating information on wildlife in the parish and we've recently made available a series of annotated checklists some of them are illustrated some of them are simple lists of species but they will give you some sort of information and baseline as to what occurs in the parish and what's to be expected and what may not be um, there are a few more to come and these are available to download from our web page which is hosted by Chudley Town Council so please do have a look at those and uh, make it known if there are errors or if you see omissions and indeed if you find anything unusual that you would like to add to those lists thank you very much for listening and if you would be interested in joining Chudley Wild and receiving our uh, regular newsletters then there's the email address for you thank you